so far you might have understood how the data can be analyzed by using one way analysis of variance, two way analysis of variance and three way analysis of variance. Now, let us understand how to analyze data with the help of analysis of covariance. I will presume that you know the meaning of a covariate. So, in this particular one, we will try to study the different names of ANCOVA, assumptions underlying analysis of covariance, when to use one way ANCOVA, how to write objectives for one way ANCOVA, how to formulate hypothesis and how to analyze data using SPSS and lastly how to interpret the output of SPSS. Now, one way ANCOVA means there is one variable having two or more levels with at least one covariate. Two way ANCOVA means there are two variables each having two or more levels along with one covariate. Suppose there are two variables, one variable has n levels and another variable has m levels, then one can say n by m factorial design and cova or it can also be called two way ANCOVA. The lastly, there are if three variables each having two or more levels with one covariate. Suppose there is variable 1 having n levels, the variable 2 having m levels the variable 3 having h levels with one covariate then it will be called three way ANCOVA or it can be called n by m by h factorial design ANCOVA with one covariate. Now, let us understand the different assumptions which the data must satisfy if it is to be analyzed with the help of analysis of covariance. One assumption is normal distribution. The data of the dependent variable or the criterion variable should have a normal distribution in the population. The second assumption is the homogeneity of variances. That means, the differences amongst the variances of the dependent variable or the criterion variable in the different groups must be same. Further, the data of the dependent variable or the criterion variable should be either on the interval scale or on the ratio scale. There should be no significant outliers, this is very important. There must be minimum one covariate as its scale of measurement should be either on interval or ratio scale. In experimental research, the independent variable and covariates are independent of each other. There must be linear correlation between dependent variable and criterion variable and covariate. When to use one way ANCOVA? One way ANCOVA should be used when there are two or more than two levels of a group and the researcher is interested 
in comparing the adjusted means of two or more groups on the dependent variable or the criterion variable and there is at least one covariate. Now, how to write objectives for one way analysis of covariance? The objective can be stated as given to compare adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided group and lecture method group by considering pre achievement as covariate. Now, how to formulate hypothesis for the objective that has been stated? The hypothesis should be formulated in the null form and the wording of the hypothesis should be there is no significant difference in adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction group and lecture method group by considering pre achievement as covariate. Which statistical technique to use to analyze the data? As per objective strategy of teaching was one independent variable having two levels and namely computer aided instruction and lecture method. Pre achievement was one covariate and achievement was the dependent variable. So, the data can be analyzed using SPSS. The output of SPSS has been given in tables 1, 2 and 3. From table 4, it can be seen that the adjusted F value is 372.38, which is significant at 0 0.01 level with D F is equal to 1 slash 57. It indicates that the adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction and lecture method groups differ significantly when pre achievement was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference between adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction group and lecture method group by considering pre achievement as covariate is rejected. Further, the adjusted mean score of achievement of computer aided instruction group is 62.35, which is significantly higher than those of lecture method group whose adjusted mean scores of achievement is 50.25. It may therefore, be said that computer aided instruction was found to be significantly superior to lecture method when groups were matched in respect of pre achievement. Let us take one more example. For this, the objective is to compare adjusted mean scores of self confidence of male and female students by considering intelligence as covariate. For this objective, the null hypothesis can be formulated as there is no significant difference in adjusted mean scores of self confidence of male and female students by considering intelligence as covariate. For testing the hypothesis, one has to use one way ANCOVA. The output 
of SPSS is given in table 5. From the output of SPSS, the results have been given in table 6. From table 6, it can be seen that the adjusted F value is 1.63 which is not significant. It indicates that there is no significant difference in adjusted mean scores of self confidence of males and females. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference in adjusted mean scores of self confidence of males and females by considering intelligence as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore be said that both males and females were found to have self confidence to the same extent when intelligence was taken as a covariate. Let us take another example where the data can be analyzed with the help of one way analysis of covariance, but here we are taking two covariate. Now, the objective can be formulated like this to compare adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction group and lecture method group by considering pre achievement and intelligence as covariates. For this objective, the hypothesis should be worded in the null form like this there is no significant difference in adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction group and lecture method group by considering pre achievement and intelligence as covariates. For this objective, you know that there is one variable which is strategy of teaching and there are two levels of it namely computer aided instruction and lecture method group. Here there are two covariates number one is pre achievement and number two is intelligence. So, therefore, the data can be used with the help of SPSS by using one way analysis of covariance with two covariate. The output of SPSS is given in tables 6, 7 and 8. Now, how to interpret results given in tables 6, 7 and 8? From the SPSS output, the table 9 can be formed. From table 9, it can be seen that the adjusted F value is 363.30 which is significant at 0 0.01 level with df equal to 1 slash 56. It indicates that the adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction group and lecture method groups differ significantly when pre achievement and intelligence were taken as covariates. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference between adjusted mean scores of achievement of computer aided instruction group and lecture method group by considering pre achievement and intelligence as covariate is rejected. 
further the adjusted means course of achievement of computer aided instruction group is 62.39 which is significantly higher than that of lecture method group whose adjusted means course of achievement is 50.21. It may therefore be said that computer aided instruction was found to be significantly superior to lecture method when groups were matched in respect of pre-achievement and intelligence.